morning, YouTube family. Good afternoon or, or good evening. Not sure where you are. So welcome. I'm trying to get my camera straight here. Hey, so hope you had a good week this week. And I'm, I got a crazy topic for you guys today. Because, you know, I'm watching the world go to, uh, you know, where in a handbasket. And I'm watching the crazies on t TV squirming. Um, you, you guys all know the Ministry of Disinformation. <laughs> or the Ministry of Truth, as 1984 would call it. Um, Orwell, George or Orwell would call it. Um, so she got fired uh, because of her disinformation, spreading disinformation. And uh, Anyway, they're going underground now with it, or at least going quieter, because... When they're being blatant about their disinformation from an official office, then they suddenly realize that's not a good thing. But they're doing it. They're doing it through their politicians, and then the politicians have no. They don't have. They don't have to account for any of it, right? They have no accountability. Hey, how are you doing, Obi? Good to see you coming on here. Yeah, you know. I don't even know where. It is. I want to be blatant with you guys about the crap that's going on. I really do. And maybe I will. Maybe I will tell you what's going on in my town. And maybe you guys will look it up. Oh, yeah, you got to look it up because it's absolute criminal. Just absolutely criminal. So there are politicians in my town who, okay, county commissioners. I'm learning a lot about what these roles are for. County commissioners apparently determine how your money is spent in your county. They, did, they decide what contracts go to everybody that gets paid by your county taxes, by the way. So you may want to pay attention to them. And in my town, they have a meeting every Tuesday. Every Tuesday morning. Well, actually, it's all day. It's like starts at 9 a.m. And then it goes till however long it needs to go. And usually there are about two or three people in the audience <laughs> paying attention to them. And that's what they love. They love that citizens are not engaged, don't pay attention, don't have the time, have their own lives and families that they have to pay attention to so that the commissioners can do whatever the heck they want. And then they go to uh, galas and parties and um, socials to meet uh, their constituents, right, and look like they're doing work, look like they're good people because they are socializing. Meanwhile, they're robbing you blind. Anyway, that's what county commissioners do. Um, so, I don't know. I'm at the point where I think maybe it's too late. You know what? They want to they wanna rob us blind, but they're robbing themselves blind too. They're destroying their own society. They're destroying their own community. And I was going to start this as, you know, I was going to title this Narcissist Deteriorate Society. But I thought maybe the narcissist rules of engagement was more interesting, maybe a little wider for us to, or maybe narrower, helps us to focus, right, on what their rules of engagement are. But what they do, they will deteriorate any society with their rules because the rules that they follow are not society's rules. They are not God-given laws and rights. They are not good for humanity. They're not good for society. They're definitely not good for your community. But they get into office and they decide to enrich themselves. You know, I used to think that there were some people who were honest and good. And I think there still are a couple that are out there that are honest and good. But it seems like these public offices, even if you start off good, unless you have an extremely strong foundation of morality, you will become just like them. So here we are, we're fighting the county clerks, I'm sorry, yeah, county commissioners and also the county clerk. So it turns out the county clerk grants the contracts. Like they're the ones who are supposed to go out and find companies to give contracts to, right? To accomplish whatever jobs need to get done, whatever. You know, roads, they, that's their favorite thing to focus on is roads. we got to build roads. we got to repair roads. And they think that if they take billions of dollars from us, they can fix roads. And yet they don't, right? We, we drive over potholes all the time. 
and um, we see perfectly good roads get torn up and replaced continually. You know, like, what the heck? Well, this is corruption, you guys. These are narcissists who are in control of pretty much every aspect of our, our lives. So the narcissist rules of engagement is, it comes naturally to these people, right? The way they behave, what they do, it comes naturally to them. The things that the CIA has to train agents to do because normal people, average people, and now I'm wondering if there are any, you know, now the average has changed. The dial for average has, has moved more towards narcissistic personalities. And it is creepy. It is absolutely creepy and disgusting and horrible. I don't even know <laughs> all the bad adjectives. Okay, add that to it. So the CIA, they train people the, according to these three rules. Okay, they have to prepare you to destroy any conscience you might have. And in destroying your conscience, it sounds like this is kind of, the rules don't sound so drastic. They don't sound intimidating or scary or evil. They sound kind of amusing. And these are the rules they will enforce and, and put inside of your brain until you accept it completely. And once you accept it completely, your conscience is gone. These are the three rules. Admit nothing, deny everything, and make counter accusations. These are their rules of engagement. So think about it. If you admit nothing, I've, I've watched enough criminal shows, like right, or sh shows about real criminals. I don't watch the fiction stuff. So I watch these crime shows where they're interviewing the criminals and the criminals will admit nothing. It is insane. Or even if they do admit something, it's so funny. Then they'll, then they'll um, gaslight. So you're going to see these three rules, but you're going to see a bunch of other rules kind of come alongside and, and support them. So gaslighting is another one. They will tell you, no, 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 I didn't say that. Even though you have video of it, right? You'll show video of them speaking these things. And then they'll say, well, go ahead and take that. You know, if, if you have evidence and you're like, this is my evidence. I have it on video. It's you speaking these words. <laughs> That's my evidence. But they'll say things like, and this we have encountered with our county commissioners. If you have evidence and we're showing them the evidence, not only are we showing them the evidence, we um, have it in print. We tell them it's in their own archives of videos of their meetings where it was admitted in front of their faces uh, by their own county clerk that they're covering for. They, you know, I'm going to throw these names, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I should throw it out. And, and this is not me saying anything other than go look it up. There is a county clerk named Chuck Browerman, B-R-O-E-R-M-A-N. Look him up. Look up the county commissioner meetings where he is located. He's in Colorado and he is in El Paso County. I'll say that. So look it up. Look up uh, the county commissioner meeting of April 5. It should, should be a Tuesday, 2022. Look it up. Watch the video. Watch him admit to breaking a procurement law. Not a, but many, right? Multiple. Never took a bid for a company called Runbeck. You guys will hear of this company more and more because they are heavily engaged in the 2K mules. <laughs> I know we're not allowed to, you know, this is ridiculous. Like I, I have to pre be careful of what I say because God forbid I say something that's actual, real, uh, you can verify it yourself. And yet... I'll get in trouble for misinformation, right? Or disinformation. When all I'm pointing you to is the actual, legitimate, their own information, their own website. So, oh, hold on. Let me see what I got here. Uh, no. 
Sorry, I was just taking a look at some of the comments. I don't quite understand what you're talking about there, Obi. So, and good to see you, John. My two absolute regulars. Thank you. <laughs> so good to see you guys. But, you know, so if you look this up, April 5th meeting. I mean, it's long. But you'll see, I want to say, probably the first, somewhere in the first three hours. And you'll see him stand up. And this is the thing. It, it was like an eight-hour meeting. And these fools are like, yeah, if you have evidence, go ahead and present it to legal authorities. And you know what? Maybe we will. We're going to have to upload eight hours of their meeting, cut down to the one and a half minutes where he spoke and said and admitted that he did not look into any other bids, nor did he advertise for any other bids, which in my town, I understand, could get people fired. People in procurement would get fired for, for doing that. And the county clerk absolutely should be fired, at the very least. Fired and then maybe charged with something. Because what the heck? You know, that is um, mishandling of taxpayer money. That, that's pretty big, right? Granting to friends. Uh, I think that's, that's illegal, right? A contract that's nearly a million dollars. Um, and then lying to the commissioners. He flat out lied to the commissioners and said we were already in a contract with Runback, and we were not. So then he clarified, they said, he clarified that, um, oh, we, we are, aren't in a contract. But what they also are saying he clarified was when he admitted that he broke procurement laws. And then they kept saying, no, 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 that's just clarification. That's clarification. So when I saw the police officer who was standing guard at the meeting, at the top of the steps where, you know, to exit, I walked out and I said to him, do you know the difference between clarification and admission of guilt to breaking a law? And he goes, yes, yes. So, I mean, he knows. But our elected officials will lie to our faces, and yet he's, he's standing there. He, he could make an arrest. He could have pursued. But I guess law enforcement only pursues if somebody makes a complaint. Even if they're, but what I don't understand is they're standing there and they're witnessing this happening, and they do nothing. But if they witness you doing drugs in front of them or assaulting someone, right, in front of them, they probably would arrest you, right? You would think, but this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a society of narcissists that have set new rules for all of us to live by. And so what do we do with that? What do, how do we survive then in that? And that is the big question. I do not condone you joining in and doing what they do. Do not gaslight Unless you're gaslighting them, I guess, you know. Um, yeah, actually, you would have to do the same thing to them. But I do not condone doing it to other people. I do not condone, you know, messing up other people's lives. And I'm sorry, if they are lie, well, I wouldn't say lie to them. I don't, I don't condone that. But I think that as much, you know, if they are willing to tell you that what you just saw didn't happen, then later on, when they accuse you of something, well, here's the thing. Whatever they accuse you of, be above board. And if, if they accuse you of something, you can flatly say, no, didn't see it. Nobody saw it. You're lying. And point it right back to them. Do not use their rules of engagement. Use real rules of engagement. And by the way, they love to shame. They love to shame and, act and make counter accusations, which is what they did. So then they accused us because we pointed out the fact that they have been lied to. They are lying. They're complicit. They're breaking the law along with the county clerk by granting this million-dollar contract, um, nearly a million dollars. Um, and actually, when you look at this company, other contracts that they've granted to it is goes beyond their total amount that, that they're taking from us goes beyond a million. So, so when you... So when they, when we presented this to them, their counter accusation was that, how dare we use their meeting to 
affect or manipulate elections. And I'm like, what? <laughs> How are we manipulating anything by pointing out the truth, which they are trying to hide from the public? And it wasn't until later that I realized that the county clerk is running for an, another office, a higher office. Actually, he's running now for treasurer. So not only does he give illegally give money contracts to his buddy companies that are embroiled in fraud cases, um, election fraud cases, he is also running for an office coming up in this midterms. And so, and the office is overlooking all of our money, the treasurer's office, right? <laughs> How great, how great will that be when he has complete, full access to all of our taxes? This is how evil they are. Um, so the county commissioners are accusing us of exposing his illegal activity in order to affect elections. And my question is, do you mean telling the truth so that voters can make informed votes? That's to you is manipulating an election, but lying to voters, hiding your crimes, hiding and covering for criminals inside your organization, inside, actually it's our organization, it's our government that they are corrupting. That is not manipulating elections. Like they want voters to vote completely uninformed, exactly the same way they they are completely uninformed when it comes to taking medicines from them, right? All right, you guys, that is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with psychopaths that are narcissistic and ego, egomaniacs that have taken control. They, they don't care. And then they fool, oh, look at my snail. <laughs> Sometimes he just detaches and comes down. So, they, they, they love to get into office and then they don't do their work. They just sign off on everything. They don't ask any questions. They're, they are complicit with the criminals that are in your town, in my town. I don't know. I'm at the point where I think, you know what? The heck with it. Let it burn. But guess what? These fools, these idiots, they will burn along with it. They think that they're above everything because they have more money than us, the average citizen. And they do. They get pretty freaking rich. They get paid six figures, you guys. They get paid six figures to hold these uh, offices that you think, wait a minute, how can they get six figures for such a minor office, such as county commissioner or county clerk? Oh, yeah. In my town, they get paid $120,000 a year. That's how much they get paid. So, yeah, exactly. Both sides are crooked. Yep, similar agenda. I agree. Um, yeah, voting is a sham in this country. Although I think there's still, I don't know. I don't know that we're going to be able to affect anything in this upcoming election, but I have a feeling that they don't have 100% control yet of all of our elections. They're moving that way. But they do not have 100% control because they cannot control or hide tens of millions of votes. They can't do that. They can't hide it. Although they have distorted it, uh, rearranged it, if you will, <laughs> flipped those votes, they have done all of that. But they cannot hide all of the votes. Okay? So that's why I still vote. Um, when it becomes electronic, I, you know, it won't matter. It won't matter then because then they just flip it inside of the machine. Oh, by the way, they believe that they're being transparent by having tours where you walk through the rooms where machines are, where computers are. Look, you're walking through the room and look, we'll even type up a page for you, an interactive page for you to play with or, or type in something. Totally transparent. But they won't show you, they won't save the actual data from 2020. They didn't save it, by the way. If they tell you they saved it, they're lying. They're absolutely lying. Um, 
and it's absolutely corrupt. There's no way you can have electronic um, interactions unless there is a paper trail if you to, to catch or audit. You need to have a paper trail. There's no um, auditing unless there is a third party or, or not even a third party. I think that since elections belong to us, the, the voters, we, it should be completely transparent. Like any voter and every voter should be able to see all of the data as it floods in, all of it, and all of the program. I mean, everything should be just open to us. There, you know, those who are like, oh, we have a contract to, to uh, conduct your election, so you can't look at it because that's a copyright infringement, and you, we don't want you to look at what we've copyrighted. Um, no, you cannot have a copyright for a tabulation program. It should only be a tabulation program. Show us your tabulation program. Give me a break that you need a copyright for that. No, you know what they have um, patents for, you guys? They have patents to, to um, re-image or reproduce your signature. That's what Runback has. They have, they have patents to, to make your signature, to recreate your signature and make it look as if it is an actual, real, live, signed signature. So, days, you know, years ago, in day, you know, old, the olden days, um, there used to be, you used to get postcards or whatever from, from your politicians or whoever, and it's signed or by a business person, you know, CEO of you own stocks or something like that. And the signature was very obvious that it's just a, an electronic sin, signature. Well, today, with Runback's patent, the signature looks almost completely authentic. You cannot tell by the naked eye that it's not authentic. You, you would have to look at it under magnification. So now when they, your, your clerks tell you, oh, we match signatures, we did signature verification. Oh, really? Did you magnify it? No, no, we just eyeballed it. Okay, so a company can reproduce and have access, by the way, because they have access to the county clerk who gives them the contract. They have access to your signature on your driver's license, on any, any piece of paper that the county clerk collects from you. So any form, any contract that you have signed, even mortgages, they have your signature in their databases. So now that they have their your signature, they hand it over to guess who? Run back. So they hand it over to this company that then says, oh, we're just verifying signatures. But we also have a patent to recreate the signature anytime, anywhere, any how we want. And guess what else they have a, a patent for? They have a patent to reproduce um, an electronic ballot. So a ballot that has been fed into a computer <clears throat> and re-imaged, they have a, a patent that can alter that ballot, meaning they can change the bubble that was circled in and move the dark circle to another, another candidate. They have a patent for that and then uh, reproduce that ballot and print it out, altered. That's what they have a, a patent for. Why would a print, uh, a ballot printing company need that kind of, kind of um, patent? You might say, oh, it's for when they do, oh, what is that called? When, um, when a ballot is, when someone fills it out wrong, puts an X through a circle instead of circling it, um, or doesn't fill in the circle entirely and the computer can't read it for some stupid reason, adjudication, that's what it is. So the computer spits it out and says, can't be counted, then you need a person's eyes to then adjudicate and say, well, this is what the person really meant to, you know, if they can figure it out. And usually you can, you're like, okay, they mostly circled that, you know, filled in this circle for candidate A. They obviously are not voting for candidate B because candidate B circle is completely empty. So now I will put into the computer that they meant to vote for candidate AA. That's what adjudication is for. But adjudication is supposed to, legally, 
and, and how and why our country has not stopped everything. Adjudication legally is only allowed up to 0.003 or 0.0003 percent of ballots can be adjudicated. That's how few would be um, spit out by a machine. But guess what happened in 2020? There were counties where up to 60 percent, 60 percent, not 0.003 or 0003, but 60 percent of the ballots were adjudicated. You guys, that means somebody else took 60 percent of the ballots and decided for 60 percent of the voters what that 60 percent intended to vote. Really, 60 percent of people couldn't fill in the bubbles correctly. 60% of the people or 60% of the ballots were so badly damaged or torn that the, the computer couldn't read it. Yeah, and if that happens, what, what they're supposed to do is stop everything, have a big old forensic audit to find out why 60% were spit out and not just go forward and say, sure, we'll have, we don't know who's adjudicating. We don't know the people who are doing this. We're just going to have, have, you know, we're just going to accept it. You guys, this is what's happening. So here we are. The narcissist rules of engagement is to admit nothing, deny everything, make counter accusations. And why do they do this? They do this to reach a goal. And when, you know, their goal is, is not hampered by conscience. Their goal is not hampered by the law. Their goal is not hampered by anything. They will do anything to achieve their goals. Hey, you guys seeing this? My little fish is sitting on the bottom. I hope he's okay. Do you see him down there? He's done this earlier too. I wonder if he's just resting. I hope he's okay. All right. He's, at, right, he's right next to the snail at the bottom. Huh. His belly is big. Maybe he's been eating too much. <laughs> All right. So you guys, sorry about that. I think I just wanted to talk about that because, you know, when you're dealing with a narcissist and you're, one, you know, I'm talking about real narcissists, you guys. I'm not talking about somebody who's just got bad behavior and they're immature and they're stupid and they're being a jerk. Yeah, there are plenty of those out there, but they still have a conscience and eventually they will grow their conscience. Um, Unfortunately, they may also not regret what they've done because in today's society, we're learning that regret is bad, right? Regret nothing. Don't, don't have any regrets. And the problem with that is then people will not, um, will not, what is it, won't keep track of themselves. Like people will not stop themselves from doing bad things because they've convinced themselves they should never have regret. And I want to tell you, that's the way narcissists think. That's the way they operate. That's part of their rules of engagement, not to have any regret. And this is why I say that when narcissists use, they start off with these three rules, admit nothing, deny everything, make counter accusations. Once they start doing that, their conscience erodes. Their conscience starts to die. And once their conscience is completely gone, they're able to do anything to anybody at any time and they will have no regrets. And that is a psychopath, you guys. What we are developing in our world right now is a psychopathic mentality. And I want you all to get off of that carousel. If you feel like you're, you know, when you watch these uh, other channels and they tell you to give back as good as you get, um, don't do that. Because that is exactly what the narcissists do. And that is exactly why our society is deteriorating. Because there's so many people doing that. And they don't care, right? They, they'll guilt you. They'll try to make you feel bad. Now, that's the one thing where I'm like, no. I'm not going to feel bad for standing up to these psychopaths. I'm not going to feel bad for calling out their crimes. And um, why, why would I, right? They're gaslighting you if they're trying to guilt you for exposing their crimes and their lies and their manipulations. They are gaslighting you. 
Oh man, I'm going to have to write another letter. This is insane. So if you want to join me in finding out what your government officials have been doing and how much money they make, you know what? Find, find out when they have their meetings and show up. Show up and start uh, holding them accountable. And this is why they get away with it. Narcissists get away with their crummy behavior when we don't hold them accountable. And this is what I want to teach you guys. What do we do? Because the world is going so much more and more insane, we have to start holding them accountable while we still have the majority of people who have a conscience. The majority of people still have a conscience. And even if there are some people out there who, like I said, were just jerks and act like they don't have a conscience, they will uh, mature and feel regret at some point. Um, although, like I said, that some may not because society is teaching them not to have any regrets, which I think is a complete disaster for our society. But if you can, show up at these meetings. Show up at the meetings. Show your face until the, they get um, so sick and tired of you. And you're going to put pressure on them. I guarantee this. When they know that you're watching and you're consistently watching and you're getting it on record and speak, make sure it gets on record. They may not allow it into their notes, their meeting notes, or their agenda notes, or whatever they call it. Um, they won't allow it uh, in print, but it's a video, and they cannot delete it. They can't alter the video. They don't have access to that. So make your, sure you show up, make your comments, make your accusations, um, but not unfounded accusations, of course. You want to point out the, what they said themselves at other meetings and note the date and note uh, what they said so that you can repeat it for them over and over and over again and have it multiple times recorded in multiple meetings until, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if something ha will happen from that, but what they hope you will do is nothing. What they hope you will do is go away, get busy with your life and leave them alone. So you guys, that's about all I got for you today. I want you to stand up to them. I want you to not feel bad when you stand up to them. It is a good thing to stand up against evil. Um, they will they will clutch their pearls and act as if, you know, how can you call them evil? They're people too. Oh my gosh, one of them did say that at one of the meetings. She got so upset at us um, pointing out their crimes their criminal behavior, their corruption. And she clutched her pearls figuratively at the end of the, you know, our part and, and acted as if, you know, how indignant she was that we would dare treat her this way or them this way um, with all of our, our mean words, right? Our mean words are calling them out for what, you know, we have far meaner words, by the way, and we did not use those. We did not degrade them. We did not call them uh, curse names or anything like that. But we told them that they lie, cheat, and steal, which they do. And we showed them where they lie, cheat, and steal. And then she said, we're people, you know, we're people. Like, no, I'm sorry, you're a narcissist. You are a criminal. Criminals belong in jail. You can sit there and cry about being a person, or you can fess up, confess to your crimes, and change your ways and stop stealing, lying, and destroying our our economy. They, they need to do something, right? We need to hold them accountable. That's what we do. We do not engage with them in that we don't fall for their manipulations. We, we don't trust them when they admit nothing and when they deny everything and when they make counter accusations. They can make all the counter accusations they want, but they have no proof you doing anything wrong because you didn't you didn't do anything wrong so point back to them that no we do not accept their counter accusation so my county commissioners are going to be hearing a lot more from me i am already looking into that um yeah i may have to start uh editing some videos and bringing video clips with me Actually, I think I will. I will try to do that. 
All right, you guys. Well, that is my show today. I didn't have a lot for you. I wanted to talk about the rules of engagement from narcissists because we are, things are getting worse. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize I didn't have this light on this whole time. Let's see if that's any better. Probably is. So, you guys, make sure you, oh, I've got squirrels on my porch. How funny. They're playing. So, Make sure that you try to get engaged. Hold them accountable. That's the only way we can fight back narcissists, right? That's the only way we can take back our society and have these people live by actual rules. Oh, I did write down something. Let me share this part with you first. We, you know, we're surprised and we may be manipulated through their gaslighting because we actually expect to live and abide in a world or society that values law and order. We value law and order. We, we want a society and we believe we live in a society that clearly distinguishes between right and wrong or good and evil. But when you're with a narcissist, that is not what they live by. They do not live by law and order, right and wrong, or distinguishing right from wrong, or distinguishing good from evil. They live in a world where their goals are to be achieved at any cost, by any means. And that's why they live by those three rules of engagement. To admit nothing, to deny everything, and to make counter accusations. This is what you see criminals do all the time. And sadly, this is how the CIA trains people. So people coming out of the CIA, I would suggest to you, be very careful about trusting them. Because um, if they were agents, that is, if they were engaged at, in subterfuge and engaged in spying, engaged in um, destroying their conscience, that will spill over into their private life. That will become part of their private life. So they're, they're going to feel like they're, they can use these techniques, these tools, these manipulations on people that they supposedly care about. And then they watch the people they supposedly care about react to them. And they get the right, when they get the right reaction, that's what they keep doing. So that's why we have to be, we have to be careful not to, to become like them. Oh, and I do want to end on good news. The good news, you guys, is that we have each other to hold one another accountable and to have morals we have each other to, to encourage one another not to become immoral. We have each other to, to create the society that we want to live in. And we can do that. All right, you guys, that's where I want to leave you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know I didn't have a whole lot for you, but I hope that this helps you. I hope that you, when you listen to this, that you will get engaged. I hope that you understand from the example that I gave you of our own county in uh, what might be happening in your county. And let me tell you, is likely that it is happening in your county. Um, yeah, because it is getting more and more widespread. You have to pay attention. You have to show up at these meetings. And if you're retired, that's the best, you know, sadly, most people can't go because they're not retired or they don't have a flexible schedule. And we don't get paid. We don't get paid to hold them accountable. We don't get paid to watch them. We don't get paid to, to make sure they're doing their job. But we get robbed if we don't, right? We get robbed. So that's our motivation. We don't want to get robbed anymore. We don't want to live in a society where they control us and and steal from us and destroy our our society all right you guys i think that there's a chance of us turning this around but if there isn't and things don't get turned around here's the other good news you know what so long as you have your health and i ask you to take care of yourself i've given you several things that you can do for yourself uh in the past stay hydrated for what right good water though try to get a filter that's good for that's a really good filter that filters out fluoride and all that other junk. Make sure it can filter that out. And then, um, and drink, drink lots of water. Take care of yourself. 
um, take, pick up this book. It's called Over the Counter Natural Cures. That's a good book. Over the Counter Natural Cures. Um, and they'll give you a lot of also good nutrition advice. All right, you guys. God bless you. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for coming on. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Comment in the comments below. Um, watch a commercial once in a while. Don't forget to subscribe and maybe share some of this information with other people. I hope to turn this around. And this is why I want to keep doing this. I want to reach out and help people stay sane, stay healthy, be good people so that we can have a good society, so that we can have a good life together. All right, you guys. Blessings to all of you, and I will see you next week.